Okay, we'll call it to order this October the 2nd, 2019 meeting, the Franklin County Commission. Roll call. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Waymeyer? Present. Chair Howard? Present. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. You'd all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing from the invocation that will be led by Reverend Charles Adams of the Faith Lutheran Church. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and continue to seek your will. Bless us with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Give to those whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, sir. Okay, Texas Correspondence and Organizational Business. Do we have anything there, Derek? Nope. Okay, no one signed up for public comment. Takes us to the consent agenda. Items today on the consent agenda that need considered and approved are claim vouchers in the amount of $216,277.18, payroll in the amount of $1,000,000. $210,135.43. The commission meeting minutes for September the 25th, 2019, and a emergency vehicle permit for which township is it? For Cutler Township Fire Department. We look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. A motion and a second. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yeah. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, our first item of business today is to consider and approve the WIC annual contract fiscal year 2020. Mitch. We're back again with a standard contract from year to year for WIC services. Uh, nothing's changed on this uh, other than we've requested an increase in uh, potential reimbursement reimbursement is based on actual expenditures so the contract um, is for over 90,000 but that's only if we actually spend that much so um, I'd answer any questions you might have about the program or the contract like so we do this every year any questions on this Ew. if not we'll look for a motion to approve the WIC annual contract for fiscal year 2020 Motion to approve. Motions are second. Second. Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Item number two, consider and approve the bid for the replacement of the jail roof. Brandon. Morning. Um, yeah, so we had our um, mandatory meeting um, a few weeks ago uh, to uh, take a look at the jail roof. Um, we had uh, two people show up. Um, we got both of those bids in, and uh, one came in at uh, 119000 The other was considerably lower at um, uh, 75995 um, Excuse me, 76995 um, so anyway, looking for approval to go ahead and go with uh, Farha Roofing um, for that project uh, for $76,995. Brandon, are you familiar with Farha? Yes, we've worked with them before. In fact, they did the roof on the old courthouse. Um, we had that replaced. Did a good job. They did, yep. They also did the um, repairs to the uh, record center when we had that tree fall on that building um, last year. Uh, they did those repairs also. Easy. Where are they out of, Brandon? Did... Um, they're out of Kansas, Kansas City. City. Easy to get hold of. Good. Yes, yeah, and uh, we had some uh, sidewalk damage um, on the courthouse lawn, and they 
had no issue whatsoever taking responsibility for that and fixing that. Um, they've been really easy to work with, so I'm, I'm really confident with uh, working with them. So they're actually going to put it over the top of what's already there? Correct, and they're going to add a little bit of insulation to that, too. There's not much insulation up there now, so they'll add a little bit um, on top, and then they'll put a, uh, a TPO um, roof on it um, over the top of the EPDM, which is kind of like a rubber-type material that's on there now. In 20 years? That's good. What was the big difference in, in uh, the beds? You know, I really don't have the answer to that. They both showed up. They, they uh, asked the same questions. They even talked together um, to make sure they were on the same page of what they were going to do and, and talked with me, and everybody was on the same page. But that's, I don't know. They just came in <laughs> that far apart. So, How many uh, companies did you have that you thought I mean, that you had put that out to that you thought could show up? So I called um, at least one other one, hoping that they would, I thought for sure they would come, but they, they didn't. And um, I really anticipated that we would have a lot more. I know when we did the, uh, uh, the same process for the HVAC of the jail, um, we had tons of companies that showed up that I didn't even call. Mm. And so um, I really thought for roofing we would have the same thing, but um, we didn't. Anyone else? Okay, if not, would look for a motion to approve the low bid of $76,995 from Far Hall Roofing for the replacement of the jail roof. Motion to approve. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, that's all we have on the items of business today. So it takes us to staff reports. Derek? Yeah. Um, we just told Brandon to stick around. A couple of other things. Uh, he received word from K Camp yesterday that they are going to cover the full cost of the visitor center roof which is a really kind of a huge win for us. We were unsure whether or not they were going to do that because the storm was from quite some time ago, and we don't know how it was missed, um, but the adjuster must not have looked at it then, but they came back out, and, and they're going to take care of that. So uh, Brandon, Janet, and I are going to... The entire roof? The entire roof at the visitor cool. center. So, yeah, that'll, that should be on lockdown for 20 years after that. Um, Brandon, Janet, and I are going to sit down. Um, what we've discovered is we have a lot of options for HVAC work over at the district court. Um, and so we need to sit down with him and, and get some idea of what our options are, what we might want to do. After we do that, we'll, of course, come to you, show you what the options are, what the costs may be. but that unless you tell us otherwise that's probably the next big project in the hopper um, we'll get the jail roof replaced the annex lot is is still being worked on um, and then we'll transition over to the district court uh, very pleased with the work we've been able to do on the jail and once we get this roof replaced we ought to be solid there. The HVAC stuff we're solid on. We've redone the detox cells over there. Uh, I think we're going to do some work to some showers. I mean, it's, and, and that's to say nothing of the work that the sheriff's done with the painting and the carpeting in there. So that, that jail's come a long way in, you know, you look at it, I don't know, Jeff, five years ago. I mean, it's, it's just a whole lot different situation, so. Um, obviously, I, I've been out for the last few weeks on paternity leave. Um, first couple of days were getting my feet back underneath me, but one of the things that was so pleased with is the organization ran incredibly well um, the last few weeks. Um, there was really nothing, um, you know, I was able to detach coming back. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot waiting on me. And I think that's a testament to the leaders we have on our leadership team. You know, when we hire these individuals, we the goal is for them to be able to run their own department. You know, we don't, we don't like micromanaging. 
and feel like we've got a team that's really excelling in that area right now. So it's nice to know that we can, you know, three weeks is a, a fairly significant period of time and just very pleased with how the organization ran. So um, talk to our, uh, the lawyer who's doing our tax sale. Um, we are um, waiting on just a couple more pieces of title work. Um, and I'm not sure when we're going to get those at this point, but uh, he hopes to have the sale actually filed in the district court in the month of October. So that is imminent. Um, now, when will it be finished? We don't really know because we're kind of at the court's discretion there. I mean, the judges set the hearings and that all depends on what their docket looks like but that's been moving forward and and hopefully that'll be formally started this month so and that's all i have yeah. morning i just wanted to kind of bring you guys up to speed on a couple things um there's a national study out there on statistics that shows that about 87% of all crime is linked back to substance abuse and addiction. And the preliminary uh, analysis we've done locally, we, we're going to align pretty similar with what those statistics are. Um, how, what we are doing to that, and the reason I bring that up is because we have a drug enforcement unit in Franklin County. Um, with us and the Ottawa Police Department. And we've looked at kind of where some of the, um, where those substances are coming into our county from. They're coming in primarily from just from north of us, which is why um, sheriffs um, from Johnson, Miami County, and myself got together and we have um, a, few, a while back started up a uh, regional task force so that we can kind of go upstream to stop that flow of drugs that's coming into our community. Um, we would rather prevent it from being here than having to respond to it all the time. Um, the reason for that is um, we, we have a, basically a crisis um, with, with, the, with drug addiction. It's effect, it affects people's mental health as well as their um, physical health. And we've had an increase, um, we've, we've seen several deaths that have been involved um, as a result of drug overdoses. Um, so we're trying to combat that. Um, that's the reason that we have done that with our drug task force. Most of the meth that is coming in here, which is the, um, the drug that is abused um, primarily more so um, than, than the other ones, uh, second to alcohol, alcoholism is, is a problem with inmates coming into our jail and going through detox as well. But um, meth is a, is a big concern for us. The meth that we, are get, that we are finding and we're getting off the streets is coming in from Mexico. Um, the state did a really good job a few years back on um, cracking down on the statutes that we have to enforce that. We used to have a lot of meth labs in Kansas, um, but the statute changes and the penalty changes on that have have really had a great impact on that. So labs are not a problem um, that we see uh, that often anymore, but we do see a lot of that drugs that it, the method is here that is coming from Mexico. Um, I work um, through the National Sheriff's Association. I'm part of a group that um, focusing on border security. Last week, um, that, or, that group um, I was out in Washington, D.C. Um, with, with that group. Um, the county did not have to take care of my, uh, my flight or hotels or any of that stuff. It was all, it was all part of that, part of that um, function out there for a border security conference. But we went out and met with um, the, uh, the administration as well as members of Congress um, to explain to them that even in the Midwest, uh, what what is coming across that southern border is, is literally killing people in, in our in our community, and so um, I wanted to let you know that we're going upstream a little further. We went upstream by going with Johnson, us in Miami County to get those drugs before they come in, but now we're also talking with members of Congress 
and the federal government to say, hey, what, what are, can you guys do and what would, does it take for you guys to improve on your job to keep that stuff from coming into our communities to begin with? And so I just wanted you to know that, way I, was, that I was out there advocating on behalf of our county um, so that we can prevent that stuff from coming in. Um, in the past couple of years, we've actually, we have also had um, um, drug cartel activity that has, that has affected our county and some incidents that have been in our county. Um, we don't want that stuff here. We want it stopped before it gets here, and that's what we're out there advocating on. So just wanted you guys to know that. The other thing um, that, that, we, um, were, that I took the opportunity to, to speak with them about is something that the National Sheriff's Association and the National Association of Counties has gotten together, and we've kind of talked about it a little bit here as well, and that is the inmate um, exclusion policy with Medicaid and what happens with, with uh, those medical expenses that when somebody is in our, in our jail. Um, and so the uh, National Association of Counties and the NSA have gotten together and uh, put together a document. You guys may have received it. Um, I'm making sure that all of our, the, uh, our federal delegation um, from Kansas will receive a copy of it because I'll be mailing that to them. I'm actually gonna be speaking with uh, Senator Moran about it today um, at a meeting in Topeka this morning. But what this will do is we're trying to get them to allow um, physicians to bill Medicaid for those expenses instead of the county having to fund all of those things anytime somebody comes to jail and their, and their benefits stop. Um, there's nothing that distinguishes right now between somebody that is there post-conviction or pre-conviction. So if somebody's up there and they haven't had their court case, they have not been convicted of a crime, the rights that they have are being taken away from them as far as that, those medical benefits that the government's not paying for anymore. Um, that's not fair to them and their families and, and it's not fair to, our, to the county taxpayers that are having to fund all of that. So um, we are part of, of that organization. So if you as county commissioners would like to reach out to any of those elected officials and encourage them from a commissioner standpoint as well, um, is to get them to start funding um, that Medicaid and continue those benefits at least before somebody is convicted of a crime. Um, that would be something that I think would be more, it would probably be very beneficial rather than just hearing it from a sheriff whose budget takes a hit on it all, all the time. So just to let you know, those are a couple things that, we've, that we do have um, that we've got going on right now and, and some of the efforts that we are doing. Um, yesterday, um, Kyle Laswell was promoted to a lieutenant, and today he's our new jail commander. And uh, so we thank you for the uh, the welcome gift you gave him with, with a new roof on the jail. Uh, that was very <laughs> very kind of you. <laughs> and so um, our jail count is up. We do have um, 11 inmates that are farmed out right now. Um, I don't know what's causing that necessarily. Um, but our, our count has just been up for the last, the last few weeks. And uh, so we're, we're dealing with that. And, but I wanted to let you know how many we had farmed out right now. I believe they're in three different counties or two different? Three, three different counties right now that is where, is where they are. Is that about as many as you had out? I mean, they seem like, yeah, is that about as many as you've had out this year? Um, I think this year... Yeah, this year that would probably be the, the highest number that, that we have had out. And so, um, and as our count in-house goes down, we work to bring those people back as soon as we can because it's cheaper for us to house them here than it is to pay some, some another county for it. So. I can remember when we always housed about even up to 10 for Johnson County. But yes. Big difference of where it was then now. It is. I do have one question back, yes, um, but when I was still into that line of work, and it's been a while now, I know, but uh, we were in, had a tri-county, which was Douglas County, I believe Jefferson and us, Is that did that go away? It did, it did. I believe Osage County was involved in that as well. Um, I mean, I don't know. But yes, that did go away um, for, I don't know why, um, that was not in, in place when when I came in office, um, and I'm not for sure what what that was about. 
I was part of that for a while. I, I don't know that it accomplished a whole lot. Technically, it was they did their thing, we did ours, and if either one needed some kind of help, they'd come and help, but that was pretty much all that was going on at that time. So. Yes, I can tell you that with our regional task force now, um, we have a detective on that. The bulk of those, of those detectives, um, the investigators on that are from Johnson County. Um, DEA is also a part of that, and then there's a, a connection with KBI. They don't technically have an agent assigned, but there is somebody that, that kind of works with them on that, and then the other agencies have people involved in that. And the cases that they're picking up typically have a nexus, not just in Johnson County, but also in Franklin and Miami County, trying to go at more of the organizations rather than just in individuals. Um, and we've seen some we've seen some early successes um, and you know, some wins for us and getting some getting a lot of drugs off the street. So uh, so far for us, it, it has it's been a good thing. Any other questions for me? Jeff, uh, Monday I went by a fatality wreck on I-70. Turned out a wrong way driver on the on I-70. But uh, learned later that the pursuit it was a high speed pursuit was because uh, I think the license plate had an expired sticker on it or something like that. Okay. Do we have? Do you have a policy for us? We do, we do have a pursuit policy. Um, and there are some recent court decisions that are also um, kind of troubling for us for, in our perspective. We have to balance between pursuing someone that is a danger to society and what type of danger are we creating by the pursuit. And so um, what we have done is we've, we've kind of, I don't know that this is the right terminology, but it's what comes to mind is we've kind of locked that down. Uh, we, we're pursuing for for dangerous offenses. Um, we're, not, we're not pursuing for traffic. We're not doing those things. Um, also to, because pursuits in and of themselves are inherently dangerous, and we have been sending our, um, our deputies uh, to training um, for EVOC, which is Emergency Vehicle Operations Course. We're doing the emergency vehicle driving, the pursuit driving, as well as what is called TVI, it's a tactical vehicle intervention. It used to be pit. Um, people think it's ramming, but it's it's a little bit. It's, it's it's not that. It's but it's a similar deal. So that we can shut down if we need if we have a pursuit that somebody that we that needs to be needs to be stopped because uh, they meet that criteria and they they are going to be going the wrong way or something like that. We can. This is a maneuver that we can use to shut that down so that we can prevent those type of things from happening. And we are we've been sending our people to to that training. Um, it's up in Topeka training with uh, Shawnee and Douglas County. Is that answer? Uh, yeah, it explains it. Okay. Minor things you're probably not going to pursue. Yeah. I think I heard somewhere where that individual had warrants on him. I may have started because of a tag, but I, I never heard what the warrants were or anything. But he and had I'm warrants. That's why I think he ran. But yeah, sure. and I'm not I'm not familiar with that, so with that I, incident. I, I know it happened, but I I don't have. Like it. I said, I don't know what the warrants were, or how serious they were, but I think that's why he probably ran on them. But yeah. Well, and I'll I'll tell you that those incidents involving chases are obviously they're highly litigious. And the county's been involved in a couple lawsuits and fortunately we've came out on the right side of both of them in part because of our policy and our our deputies i mean adherence to that policy i mean in both cases we we did what we were supposed to do per our policy and and you know we weren't exposed in any way because of that so so I, I think we've got a good policy in place I, I think so we and we've done some some tweaking on, on that as well and uh, and we work with our with K camp our insurance provider to that's who we communicate with it with some help with them and and their lawyers um, on, on how we draft those things all Jeff's up here. I, I do have a couple more things. <clears throat> One to talk about Kyle a little bit. Um, Jeff made a tremendous choice there. You know, in my position, I obviously work with every office and every department, so I might not know 
all 230 employees by name, um, recognize all of them, know most of them. Um, and I'll tell you, Kyle isn't just one of the best employees in the sheriff's office, he's one of the best employees in the whole organization. Um, great attitude um, and a career and a profession where it's hard to always keep a great attitude. Kyle has kept one. He's involved with the city of Wellsville on their city council. Um, really, in a lot of ways, epitomizes what it is to be a public servant. And, and I, I love to see people get rewarded. Uh, hardworking people who do things the right way get rewarded. And, and certainly, uh, I think Jeff's rewarded him with this promotion. And I'm really excited for where the jail um, is heading now because I think it's I think it's improved a lot over the last couple of years, and I think it's going to keep improving. On that note, um, something that Jeff and I have been talking about, and Rick, I know you and I have talked about it. Um, it's been brought to my attention in the last month. Jeff and I were talking about it pretty heavily before I went on leave. Our starting pay for our jailers is is pretty pretty poor. Um, I've said time and time again, I, I would love to raise the pay for all of our employees across the board. Um, we obviously cannot do that without raising our mill levy and because of our tax lid, we literally can't do that without putting it to a vote. Um, that being said, uh, we have a pay plan in place and it is a good pay plan and it, it's, you know, it at least says something that we're able to keep that in place. But our jailers, they're starting below what Anderson County pays, what Osage County pays, what Miami County pays, what Lyon County pays, and that's unacceptable. And I think it's embarrassing a little bit, and it's not, it's not an indictment on the board, it's not an indictment on the sheriff, it's, I don't know how that came to be, to be honest. I don't know if it was a result of the Austin Peters study, but I do think we need to do something about that. And so Jeff and I, and we've worked with Joanne, we're gonna sit down with Janet. We will probably be bringing some kind of proposal to you in the, the near future to try and rectify that situation. And, and I'll say right now that this isn't a snowball that I expect to get bigger. Um, we cannot raise, aggressively raise wages for all of our employees, we can't. But I will tell you, if you look across the board, including the deputies, they all fare better versus their peers in other counties than our jailers do. So while I might want to pay our deputies more, they're doing better than deputies in Osage and Anderson. And I want to pay my greater operators more, but they're doing better than, than their peers. But our jailers aren't. And so I view this as a move to help get them up to speed with where they really ought to be. Um, and so you might be on the lookout for that probably in the month of October. I think that'll also help Kyle. I mean, that we're looking at potentially, I mean, I think the closest we, we're closest to Osage County, I think, and we're like a dollar seventy an hour beneath them. I mean, it's bad. So I think we're looking at a couple dollar an hour increase, but in theory, that will help our candidate pool. I think people will want to work for Kyle. I think that'll help. So I just, I, I think some of the staffing issues we've had in there, we can look forward to hopefully those going away if we can make these moves. So um, we'll, I told Jeff when I got back, we'd make it a priority and, and we will. We'll sit down either later this week or next, have something in front of you, probably maybe at a study session first here in the next week or two. And like you said, we've talked and, you know, we knew that uh, our dispatchers was needed to be raised and we were able to find a way with the, the moves that was made there to, to bring them up or closer to where they should be. And uh, I agree with you 100%. And I think we can find a way if we look into it to bring our jailers up to where they should be too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. Any other questions? 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ooh, skipped over. Go back, Midge. You have anything on staff reports? You got all. Pl you got plenty of flu shots available and everything. Did you get the second round of the shingle shot yet? <laughs> you might call Walmart. They said they have them. So. <laughs> I don't know. I saw a sign. Up. Brandon? Uh, the only thing I was just going to add to uh, what Derek was talking about, um, the only thing I have to add to that is the annex parking lot here. Uh, crack sealing is being scheduled. Um, some of the rain has kind of messed with some of that, and uh, the more that we talk with uh, uh, Vance Brothers, who's going to be doing that, um, we determined that the weekend is probably going to be the best because this parking lot is just so full. Um, Are we crack sealing or slurry sealing? Crack ceiling first, and then the next step would be to slurry. Um, not sure how that's going to work out. We haven't really discussed that yet. Are you talking uh, about that in the spring? That would be a springtime project, yes. I, I feel like what when we talked about it together, the plan was to fix the drainage, crack seal, slurry coat, repaint. And so I think if we crack seal this fall, um, I think we can go ahead and, and schedule a slurry for the spring, but I think we'll probably have to wait until then, um, and then we'll paint, and then I think we'll have a, you know, lot should be in pretty good shape at that point. Yeah, definitely, so. definitely. And uh, we've got a lot of gravel and stuff in the parking lot right now, but uh, the city has uh, kindly agreed to run their sweeper through the, our parking lot um, a couple of days before this uh, crack ceiling is supposed to start. So those guys will have a easier time filling those cracks. So appreciate their help on that too. Any questions for Brandon before we take off? So? Thanks, Brandon. I think I got caught up, Janet. Okay, take us to commissioner comments and board reports. You wanna start, uh, Roy? Oh, I just wanna welcome Kyle. Congratulate him to be the new uh, Lieutenant at the jail. Bye. <laughs> we were just congratulating you. <laughs> I don't have anything else. We did have our uh, health department, uh, what is it called, a tri triennial meeting and last week. And every time we meet, it's amazing to me that the, the, this broad outreach that our health department has, you know, including housing, you know, uh, for homeless. And, and just, just all the different things that they, they do to reach out. And I'm looking forward to a meeting that they're gonna to have to address some of the issues in our county. Um, I did attend the uh, retirement for uh, reception for Brenda May. And you know, it, it'll, it will be a win if we ever have a jailer that retires, you know, because, <laughs> you know, out of the jail, just because, it, it, I mean, it is amazing. We have long-term employees that have been here a long time that have committed to this county and, and that's, I, I always tell them you didn't get my permission to retire, but you know, enjoy your retirement. Um, I did attend the Chamber Coffee on um, Friday, which was the kickoff for the United United Way. Um, and you know, United Way, you kind of forget what it's about, but it's local and it's like 18 different organizations in the county that benefit from that. Um, and so if you have an opportunity to give either through your work or to just write a check or attend a money a fundraising event and our own Aaron Laurie from the uh, health department is the um, chairman of the the campaign this year and so that's awesome and then last thing Saturday morning if you need a great breakfast uh, the Princeton the city of Princeton is having a biscuits and gravy um, breakfast at the uh, community building on Saturday morning so come on out uh, yeah, I have a chance to work with Kyle on another level because he is city commissioner in Wellsville, and I see the importance of him being on the city commission up there where they have their own law enforcement there in the city. He's pretty valuable to have on their city council, but he talks on the same language as, as that department day to day and knows it. So he does a great job up there, and I, he'll do good at this job too. I did attend the Wellsville meeting last week. Uh, 
main thing on their subject is mostly business that goes that they did approve a $150,000 contract with Cook Flat and Strobel to do a bunch of engineering on several different upgrades and projects the city of Wellsville getting ready to do right now, which is with what they're doing out there with the truck stop and the steel company. Uh, they're making a lot of good infrastructure movement, which they hadn't done in a lot of years. Uh, I did get an email from the Coffee County Commissioner, and they wanted to thank us. They come up here about three or four weeks ago, and they met with Dustin, and Dustin was very helpful to them, they said, and they have, they are now setting up their video system and, and audio and the whole works, and, and they appreciate <coughs> Dustin's help, and they talked to us, and, and uh, that he took the time to meet with them and, and give them the, uh, the good and the bad ideas, and they were very thankful about it. I did this kind of off the deal too, but it was still county. I attended Central Heights football game the other night, and it was, most people don't, you take it for granted, but we had two sheriff's deputies down there that was very visible, and, and they stayed there for the whole five overtimes the game <laughs> went, and the ambulance service, I'm sure it was overtime for them to be there. And it was the only ball game I ever went to. I had to sit on one side I had sat on the Oskaloosa side the first half because my son's a coach at Oskaloosa, the football coach, and I sat on the other half. I only I didn't know it was going to last five overtimes on the other half, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was good to see our ambulance visible and the two sheriff's deputies, you know, very visible for the whole thing, and you know, it's good to see the public sees us there and providing the service. That's all I got. To the hospital board meeting, the new members we appointed it was their first meeting. Um, however. Very light meeting business wise. There's nothing to report on that end. So. I also attended the retirement reception and the health department meeting. Those are the only two things I've been to. The only thing I want to make a quick comment on I got a uh, email the other day from Tammy about the uh, study session that uh, she had nothing on the uh, agenda for the study session. And she had already talked to Derek and basically told him it was my call whether we canceled or what to do with that. So I made the call to cancel it. Um, we are one of the few counties around that do study sessions, and they definitely make the Wednesday meetings run a lot smoother and go better. And we don't take it lightly. We have canceled some of them, but the only time they will be canceled is, like I said, if there's nothing there, we have nothing to discuss, we're not going to just come in for a meeting if we have nothing to, to meet for. I know a lot of times uh, we've had pretty light for the study session and Derek's made a lot of effort to find something that we need to talk about so we can do it. So I just wanted to put out there that, uh, you know, like I said, I think Coffee County didn't do study sessions and some of the others don't around us. And, and I think they're talking about putting it in now because they saw how how uh, beneficial they are. So I just wanted to say that, that, you know, we'll, we don't just uh, cancel to cancel. We didn't have anything to do, so that's why it was canceled. So I just wanted to put that out there, and if we can find something to study, we will be here for the study session. If we have nothing and nothing to talk about, then uh, that's when you'll see canceled once in a while. So that's all I have. Um, Chair Howard, could I say one thing? Um, on Friday is the Southeast Kansas officials meeting, and I know I previously sent that out to you. Um, and I think the commissioners that usually go to that um, said they were tied up and couldn't go. But I just want to let you know if something's changed and you do want to go on Friday, there's a group of us going um, to Wilson County. So uh, just let me know if you're thinking about going that. Our, we, we have numbers in our count that you can go if you want to go. I told Janet if she'd have just given me a little more notice, I'd have gladly went down there. But I, I just found out about it yesterday, and I've, I've got pre-existing obligations. But Rick, if you want to agree to do it, that might be. Um, um, could you get a hold of Wilson County and see if they could postpone them for a week or so? so tell them they'll, they'll have Derek if they can postpone them for a while. <laughs> They, they might want to. I don't know. I told him it's always a good time, and they always provide a good lunch. So he's really missing out. <laughs> Is uh, Wilson County Fredonia? Fredonia. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think Fredonia is having some issues right now. That's, That's city. the city. That's We're the city. Going to a county meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyone else have anything? 
Uh, we have a commission meeting uh, a week from today. No study sessions uh, scheduled for next Monday. That's all I see that's coming up. We have a joint luncheon next week also, right? We do. Isn't that next week? Uh, oh, the true. 16th. Oh, right, shoot, sure, that was great. So, okay, if not, we'd look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Have a motion to a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? We're adjourned.